Support comes from the Norton Simon Museum, presenting the film series from canvas to screen on select Saturdays in March. Enjoy a film that captures the drama and beauty of some of history's most celebrated works of art. Kicking off with Dreams by Akira Kurosawa on March 9th at NortonSimon.org. Support comes from Pasadena Playhouse, presenting One of the Good Ones. Meet your new favorite family in this laugh-out-loud, heartfelt story from Gloria Calderon-Kellett, the co-creator and showrunner of Netflix's One Day at a Time. Performances begin March 13th. Tickets on sale now at PasadenaPlayhouse.org. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, we will look at a mystery surrounding an Orange County nonprofit that got millions of dollars in taxpayer money. Is it still operating? The county isn't sure. The costs linked to the LAPD's botched fireworks destruction in South LA three years ago are going up and up. And we're watching the Eagles, not the Philly football team or the famous L.A. rock band, the Eagles on the Nest Cam in Big Bear. It's Thursday, March 7th. I'm Nick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A. at 89.3. Officials in Orange County say they're scrambling to understand what's happening at the Viet America Society, the Huntington Beach nonprofit that got millions of taxpayer dollars from the county. Those officials say the money is unaccounted for. Details from L.A. senior reporter Nick Gerda. The latest development comes in an ongoing LAist investigation of money OC supervisor Andrew Doe directed to the group run by his daughter. In recent days, the nonprofit said it was shutting down, but then quickly reversed course. That's according to a group that manages its county funding. The LA is senior reporter Nick Gerda. An Orange County representative says the Viet America Society is now suspended from operating a mental health hotline. Leaders at the nonprofit and Supervisor Andrew Doe have not responded to LA's request for comment. The voter ID measure on the ballot in Huntington Beach appears headed for passage. It aims to allow the city to ask voters for an ID at the polls. Now, that's in direct contradiction to the way the state of California verifies the identity of voters. Protect Huntington Beach, the main group opposing the measure, conceded defeat last night in social media posts. Connie Boardman is with that group. The attorney general and the secretary of state have both said it's inconsistent with state law. So I'm I'm not sure it will ever be implemented. Huntington Beach Mayor Gracie Vandermark helped put the voter ID measure on the ballot. She told L.A. as she expects a legal challenge from the state, but she also says she's committed to working to implement the will of the city's voters. New numbers released to LAS by the Los Angeles City Controller's Office show the costs continued to mount in the aftermath of a botched fireworks detonation by the LAPD back in 2021. The story from LAist reporter Yusra Farzan. In the last four months, the city has spent an additional $1 million to address damages incurred after an LAPD bomb squad vehicle exploded in South LA. At least 24 homes were damaged or destroyed. That brings the total amount spent by the city to $10.5 million. Money continues to be spent on temporary housing and relocation costs for at least 10 displaced families and on liability claims. Mayor Karen Bass's office previously told LA's that she's working with council member Karen Price and city departments to, quote, make these families whole. For LA's 89.3, I'm Yusra Farzan. When we come back, we have news about Eagles, not the Philly football team and the famous L.A. rock band. We're talking about the Eagles on the Nest Cam in Big Bear. Support for LAist comes from the Norton Simon Museum, presenting the film series from canvas to screen, capturing the drama and beauty of some of history's most celebrated works of art. Films include Dreams by Akira Kurosawa, Metropolis by Fritz Lang, Days of Heaven by Terrence Malick, and Marie Antoinette by Sofia Coppola. Screenings are at 4.30 p.m. on four consecutive Saturdays starting March 9th. More information at nortonsimon.org. Starting a home renovation project is a big investment and comes with a lot of decisions, from setting a realistic budget to gathering estimates and finding a reliable and honest contractor. 
That's why I'm so happy to have found Realm. They help with every step. Realm is here to give you personalized, trusted guidance for all your home improvement projects. With Realm, you'll get an unbiased renovation advisor who will help you with expert advice and support through the whole process. Your Realm advisor will match you with triple vetted high quality contractors, share accurate project estimates, assist with project planning, guide you through financial options, and provide customized data-driven support so your project stays on schedule and on budget. See for yourself why Realm is the largest renovation service in California. Schedule your free meeting with a Realm advisor today. Go to realmhome.com. Mention the LA report during your first advisor meeting for a special offer. Visit realmhome.com. You'll be so glad you did. That's realmhome.com. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. Last year's twin strikes by scriptwriters and actors brought Hollywood to its knees. Now the movie and TV studios and streamers have to find a way to avoid a rerun. The International Association of Theatrical and Stage Employees, IATSE, has opened contract talks with the producers. IATSE is negotiating with the other unions for behind-the-camera workers who make productions go. If these unions don't work, no one works in Hollywood. Entertainment writer Richard Rushfield at our partner The Ankler says it's not clear if these negotiations will go better or faster than the ones last year, but they have to. The cost of not working something out is so catastrophic to have another major shutdown, which would be three major shutdowns in a row if you include COVID and the actors and writers strikes of last year. Richard Rushfield with our partner, The Ankler, he says he's not sure how the unions and the producers will strike a deal or how long it will take, but he says the two sides will reach an agreement. It's nervous time for tens of thousands of Eagle fans, not the fans of that football team or the famous rock band. We're talking about Jackie and Shadow, the bald eagles in Big Bear that you can watch on a live nest cam. Well, Jackie laid three eggs this winter. They should be hatching soon. Jackie and Shadow have been keeping the nest warm, but it has been snowing. After weeks of waiting, still no Eagle chicks LA's reporter McKenna Sievertson says not all hope is lost, but time is running out. Pip Watch started a week ago, but there's still no signs of bald eagle babies. Jackie laid all three eggs at the end of January, and the first one is a few days overdue for the normal incubation time for this nest on the north side of Big Bear Lake. But Friends of Big Bear Valley, the nonprofit that manages the live stream, says eggs have been known to last a little longer in other wild nests, and they'll be following Jackie and Shadow's lead. LA's reporter McKenna Sievert sent the other two eggs still have a few days to go. The fans of the Big Bear Eagles are worried about a repeat of last year. That's when Jackie and Shadow were watching over two eggs. After more than six weeks of incubating, neither egg hatched. Thanks for listening to the LA Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to listen again tomorrow morning when Suzanne Watley brings you the LA Report AM edition. The L.A. Report is produced by Libby Rainey and Tiffany Ujiea. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, the director of content development. Our engineer, Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about this evening's stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the L.A. Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. 